three, two, one, YouTube video, Facebook Live, and podcast audio recording. Let's get down to the funky stuff. I'll tell you who. In Father Teresa's wine cellar, we believe all oppression is intersectional. And this means our analysis of current events frequently includes discussion of difficult and explicit content. Any combination of the following topics could be included in our show. Murder, rape, war, climate change, racism, sexism, violence, sexual violence, homophobic violence, heterocentrism, discrimination and abuse against individuals of nonconformist sexuality, domestic violence, child abuse, child rape, child neglect, elderly abuse, verbal abuse, police brutality, microaggressions, ableism, cyberbullying, genital mutilation, ideological extremism, and people just being total fucking assholes. All right, Father Teresa's wine cellar, William J. Black Ass Motherfucker, the greatest black atheist, Phoenix Kaleeder, the Uppity Negress. Follow on the Twitters at Uppity Negress, two P's, two T's, two S's, to make you stress this, and fools mess with. It's not the one that you want to test, kid. All right. Um, <clears throat> Leaner Dunham and Rebel Wilson are the mumble rappers <clears throat> of white feminism. These are the facts. Yes, yes. These are the truths. All right. I barely, I barely know much about these people. All I know about Leaner Dunham is whenever racist news about her comes out. That's all I ever know. I don't know shit about Leaner Dunham, man. It's Moral Monday, and you're in the wine cellar. Yeah, I, I know fuck all about I Like, I know she has a television program. I know she played a fictional character on a season of um, McMurrican Horror Story. And uh, I, may, maybe she's good at acting. Maybe I dislike the character because I already dislike the Dunham. The character she's playing was a real person. Yes, somebody okay. that wrote something called the Scum Manifesto. Yes. Which, and, that's so white feminism. And shot Andy Warhol. See, I, I don't know who that is either. I was out. I know real person, but I'm one of those black... It's This is not... This is... I think this is black ignorance of white people's stuff. Um, I mean, he was an artist. He was an artist. Yes. An artiste. An artiste. Was it good? I wasn't a fan myself. He wasn't good. I think he once had a display that was just like a toilet and it was called, is this art or something? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he did other stuff too, but yeah. All right. Had a display of a toilet titled it, is this art? You know what? He is also a mumble rapper. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who is that over there? Uh, Melanie Loco. Stop by the joint. See what's going on. All right, um, you own this one. You've got this episode. Oh, the whole thing? What's happening? Yeah, All man, right. we're, we're back to that shit where I'm running around the factory while you're doing show notes. All right, so Lena Dunham is going to adapt a refugee survival story for J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg. Uh, for some reason, Spielberg and Abrams went with Dunham to adapt a story called A More... A Hope More Powerful Than the Sea, One Refugee's Incredible Story of Love, Loss, and Survival. Uh, the nonfiction release comes after author Melissa Fleming, um, wait, what comes, oh, comes from author Melissa Fleming, the chief, the chief spokeswoman for the United Nations High Commissioner. It documents the true story who, of Doa Alzamel, <laughs> <laughs> a mother of two fleeing Egypt for Sweden by boat, shipwrecked along the way, Alzamel had survived, had to survive for days in open water while holding a child in each arm. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, remember, refugees are assholes and they're coming here to, like, ruin your life or something. That's why they're fucking stuck in water trying not to let their kids drown. Um, obviously they're coming here for horrible reasons. Um, so yeah, I mean, what the fuck? Uh, what? 
What? I don't know. You don't like bad news? Um, so I just fucking, I don't, like, Lena Dunham, like, they, they didn't, they couldn't find a real refugee to, refugees don't actually write things, they don't do things, like, what, what's going on here? No, they don't. They don't. All no, right. They're, they're busy at MS-13 meetings. They are at MS-13 meetings, yeah. All right. Uh, making caravans and whatnot. I got invited to one. Did I'm you a, go? I'm a guest speaker. It's not until um they actually get here. Oh. So. Wait, like to the border or like here, here? Like here. Illinois. So I'm going to have a lot more gray hairs in my beard. I'm going to look very distinguished mm. when mm -hmm. I'm finally at this MS-13 Dodge Caravan Are meeting. Are you going to get any tattoos or anything to go? No, you don't put tattoos on Ferraris. I mean, uh, bumper stickers on Ferraris. Whoopsie days. The but yeah, no, I don't, I don't do tattoos. No tattoos, no piercings. I have a tattoo. Hotep um, cat. It's not a hotep cat. Yes, it is. <sighs> um, and then, okay, so that's what Lena Dunham's doing. It's going to be trash, I'm quite certain. Fucking Lena Dunham. And then Rebel Wilson. What Now, what's the background on? Because I, I, I've <clears> never <throat> even heard this person's name before. Maybe I have and forgot. Um, she's basically just like a mediocre white actress. But like her thing is that she's fat. So, you know. Wait a second. Was she the one that was on Louis C.K.'s television show? And he went on a date with her in the program? I don't know. I didn't watch the show enough to know. Huh. Okay. But yeah, like she's, I don't know. She's just. Lace this eh. up while I look. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I, like, occasionally she's just known for saying ridiculous things. Like she made some like joke about police brutality that wasn't funny at like an award show or something. I'm just uh, She's a mediocre actress. The only thing I know her from is the Pitch Perfect movies where literally her character's name was Fat Amy. It's just like, all right, we get it, you're fat. So anyways, now, Rebel Wilson, oh, and she's Australian too. Uh, the fucking Australians, her and Iggy, man. Uh, Rebel Wilson has stirred up controversy last week when she claimed she was the first plus-size actress to star in a romantic comedy film, and now she's blocked everyone who disagreed with her to such an extent that hashtag Rebel Wilson blocked me is trending on Twitter. Uh, the Bridesmaid star appeared on The Ellen DeGeneres Show on October 31st to discuss her new film called Isn't It Romantic. She claimed she was the, quote, first ever plus-size girl to be the star of a romantic comedy. Um, in a tweet since, a Twitter user corrected her, referencing both Queen Latifah and Monique. Queen Latifah starred in 2006's The Last Holiday and 2010's Just Right, while Monique uh, was in Fat Girls in 2006. So somebody... Uh, whose Twitter ad is half a pint doll said, I love at Rebel Wilson as much as the next girl, but she isn't the first plus size woman to play a, the lead in a romantic comedy. Queen Latifah and Monique both played rom-com leads. And Rebel Wilson, because she's a white woman and someone hurt her feelings, responded completely appropriately um, and totally lacking emotion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Rebel Wilson responded to that tweet and said, Hey, girl. Yeah, of course I know those movies, but it's questionable as to whether one... Technically, those actresses were plus size. What? Yeah, because you know how everybody knows Queen Latifah and Monique for not being plus size, right? No, well, well, not Monique. <laughs> not Monique. No, just yeah. for being dark skin. Oh yes, yes, yeah. just for being dark skin. And, uh -huh. and Queen Latifah for being from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a very big thing. She's the only rapper from New Jersey, so that's kind of a big thing. And I, okay, I looked up the Rebel Wilson. I typed her name with Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. Yes, she was the one from that episode of the show. And then when I saw her face from that show, I remembered I heard her on BBC Woman's Hour. And now I wish I had more time to do show prep, but capitalism won't allow for that because mm -hmm. I would try to find that archive because she said on BBC Woman's Hour a couple years ago that she doesn't want to just be fat characters. Oh. And that's why, like, she looked, she really read the script that Louis C.K. gave her and said, this is actually a really good script and I'm going to take this one. But she doesn't want to just do fat characters. But now she's up here tweeting about be the first fat something. Or yeah. they're saying plus size. I'm yeah. using the wrong language, right? Well, it's, whatever. Um, fat people usually say fat. Like, let's just be honest. Uh, but also it's like, nigga, the franchise, you, your most successful franchise is Pitch Perfect and your character's name is Fat Amy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I 
Anyway, so this tweet, she says, uh, it's questionable as to whether, one, technically those actresses were plus size when filming those movies. Nigga, the fuck? And two, technically those films are categor categorized or billed as a, stu a studio rom-com with a sole lead. So there's a gray area. I swear to fuck, I've never heard of fat splaining before. That's a thing now. It's a thing. It, it's, it's a sect it's really, of white splaining. It's white. It's just white splaining. Ah, really? Um, so then, many uh, on Twitter accused Wilson of ignoring the achievements of Black women and then blocking them when they pointed it out. Uh, someone said Black women's bodies don't matter when it comes to white women like Rebel Wilson. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Another said it wasn't just Wilson, it was mainstream Hollywood that reduces black films to merely black movies without recognizing their contributions to entertainment as a whole. Uh, someone said, this is at Cheyenne YouTube, said uh, Rebel Wilson doesn't count Queen Latifah's movie as a rom-com, probably because her and the rest of white Hollywood are too busy labeling movies with black leads as, quote, black movies only. Yeah, so... Oh. Right, yeah. And then Monique got involved. Not involved. Monique just said one, had one tweet and said, <laughs> yep. hey, my sweet sister, let's please not allow this business to erase our talent while giving gray areas and technicalities. Take a moment and know the history. Don't be a part of erasing it. I wish you the best. I was like, yeah. OG. And yeah. Um, Rachel Loco in the, uh, uh, in the archive chat space on the Facebook, on my personal Facebook page, uh, said, um, as a fat person... I say I'm fat all the time. It's just the uh, context it's used um, onto, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, onto whether or not I'll be pissed off. That seems legit. Ooh, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, and then uh, she just went on this, like, blocking rampage, and it's just blocking. I don't think I've been blocked yet, though. I have not been blocked yet by Rebel Wilson. I feel left out. Did you tweet at her? I did. I did. What, did you use the word black? Uh, kind of in black Twitter. Because the, the article I just read, they titled it Rebel Wilson Accused of Blocking Black Critics. Except here's the thing. If you go into the hashtag Rebel Wilson Blocked Me, it's literally screenshots of what they said and then what they got, you know, what they got blocked for, followed with a screenshot that says at Rebel Wilson Blocked You. So I said, how are they saying she's accused of it when there's actual factual screen caps? Y'all don't know about black Twitter and receipt culture yet in 2018? like that it's a culture it is a culture it's like call out culture it's toxic it's mean <laughs> okay and apparently yes an auto load all right so i'm not gonna do it yet all right what's that but uh i downloaded the um what, what's that fucker's name scott b i'm having the same problem oh that fucking incel b early and, and you know what amy goodman even stumbled on this on democracy now there's too many fucking vowels in it it they're oddly placed. Why E I E? You fucking old McDonald had a farm ass nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yo. <laughs> Goddamn goofy ass name. <laughs> yeah, man. It, yeah, even Amy Goodman like had an awkward pause, and then she just threw one out there and kept talking. <laughs> fucking professional. And um, <laughs> and I, I was playing his video that someone caught and re-uploaded, and did some. It, it, it I think it's hard to comment on mm -hmm. because. It's pretty much sort of uh, all the right wing talking points, just general racism, but kind of weird. Like he actually thinks dreadlocks are a bad hairstyle and makes you look like a Jamaican drug dealer. It's weird. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, at first I thought it was bullshit because mm -hmm. I, I went to SoundCloud, typed his name in. And the, um, I think it's uh, some one of his pictures is a generic picture, and everything was uploaded 10 hours ago because you know SoundCloud took down all his shit, so right. But somebody mm -hmm. caught the shit and re uploaded it, and um, his shit is weird. Um, a lot of them are not titled, so I clicked on ones that were titled, and it's very <laughs> awkward him being a um, self described incel. Mm -hmm. But having a song titled, I don't fuck fat chicks for free. I don't get that one. All right. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to um, on Twitter at class at class clown KJL. That is the one who linked me to the video on the incel website. Yes, I so caught that. You, you tagged me up. Yes. And um, and some folks that uh, like to hold the program down over here. Um, 
it looks like just today, uh, Dave L came through on the Patreon, and a couple days ago, uh, Vergie V came through and signed up on the Patreon, holding it the funk down. Yeah, and especially because because Phoenix Kaleeder is not at that office anymore. She got her last check. That's hey. over. Yeah, so content creator it is. Uh, yes. Please go to the YouTube, The Black Podcast, and click subscribe. We got to get that up to 4,000 so that we can um, apply to monetize yeah. on YouTube. They're not going to let us do it. But yeah, we have yeah. to ask. Now, I'll, I'll delete all of these and put up three cat videos. We actually have cats. <laughs> we can make original cat videos. I swear to fuck, I'll do it. We can, we can. Yeah. And of course, Mace loves to do like that goofy ass, like photographable shit we too. We do. We have a silly cat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the runt. If they were in the wild, this is the, supposed to be the one that got snatched up by a hawk shortly after birth. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one that wasn't supposed to make it. That's probably why he doesn't know how to act. He's not supposed to exist. <laughs> Evolution is against this cat existing, and that's why that's the wild one. All yeah. right. Uh, hell, what else you got? It's your episode, it's Chief. It's my episode. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, U.S. Supreme Court ends fight over Obama-era net neutrality rules. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court Monday refused a request by the Trump administration and the telecommunications industry to wipe away a lower court decision that had upheld Obama-era net neutrality rules aimed at ensuring a free and open free and open internet, though the justice's action does not undo the repeal of the 2017 policy. Fantastic. Uh, the high court's decision not to throw out the 2016 U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit ruling leaves a legal precedent in place that could help net neutrality supporters in any future legal battle if the policy is ever reintroduced. Um, <coughs> this is a little disingenuous. The rules were championed by former Democratic President Barack Obama. <laughs> Wait, who wrote this? <laughs> uh, Lawrence Hurley, Reuters. Reuters, wait that Barry, that, wait that he championed. Mm -hmm. That's a strong word. Championed the rules intended to safeguard equal access to content on the internet. And you know, so many names have come up now <clears throat> that now I Tom Wheeler. <laughs> but when he put Tom Wheeler, when he appointed that nigga, that's not championing. And then people are. And I, I get it. Like it's very wise to say when you're when you're a propagandist, when you're a partisan propagandist, to say Obama era policies, because mm -hmm. Obama era doesn't mean Obama policy. That was an activist policy. The activists got in Tom Wheeler's ass and mm -hmm. got them policies. Except this literally says Obama. Oh damn. Yeah, the rules championed uh, championed by Democratic former President Barack Obama intended to safeguard equal access to content on the internet were opposed by President Donald Trump, a Republican. Can you smell the partisanship here? Wait a second. At the time, are there quotes from Donald Trump at the time of the that the of course policies not. went into place? Of course not. He didn't even know what the fuck it was until six months ago, probably. Donald Trump doesn't even know what the internet is. He knows what Twitter is. Probably not. <laughs> he probably doesn't. Yeah, actually, if he did, he'd be deleting old tweets. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's, a, that's an incredibly partisan sentence. The rules were championed by Democratic former President Barack Obama, intended to safeguard equal access on the internet, and were opposed by President Donald Trump, a Republican. That is some partisan rewriting of history. <clears throat> Yo, Facebook is weird. What happened? It's asking me if I want to tag one of the homies in the video. Okay. But like, why? And it's a specific person too. It's like, do you want to tag oh, this specific person? They've watched videos before. Oh, I think the I think that's one of the homies that hits up the PayPal or the Patreon too. Like, a, but okay. yeah, that's all right. So Facebook wants me to tag people. Mm hmm. Uh, the Trump administration and the telecom industry wanted to erase the 2016 ruling, uh, even though Republican-led Federal Communications Commission in December voted to repeal the net neutrality rules. The policy reversal went into effect in June. The Supreme Court's brief order noted that three of the court's conservative justices, Samuel uh, Alito, Alito, Neil Gorsuch, and Clarence Thomas, would have thrown out the appeals court decision. Uh, neither... Chief Justice John Roberts, nor new appointee, Brett, new Trump appointee, Brett Kavanaugh, participated mm -hmm. in the decision. This very, very fucking partisan article. 
Um, Industry Trade Group U.S. Telecom, one of the groups that challenged the 2015 net neutrality rules, said the high court's action was not surprising. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Politics yeah. is weird and creepy. And now I know lacks even the loosest attachment to anything like reality. And of course, we remember that the net neutrality repeal was a win for providers like Comcast, AT&T, AT and and Verizon. Uh, it was opposed by internet companies like Facebook and Amazon, uh, who have said that the repeal could lead to higher costs. Right. Uh -huh. Remember when everybody's like, "Don't worry about net neutrality." That's stupid. And that was I'm looking at you, <clears throat> Raymond. <clears throat> Raymond Loco. And um, yeah, uh, so. Oh, that's the end of that article? That's the end of that article. Okay. So, I, you know what? We will riff on... Um, what's this fucker's name again? Scott Breer... B... Fuck you, Scotty. Punk yeah. ass. Your name is Punk Ass Scotty. Did he die? Or they arrested him? I alive? believe they arrested him alive. Okay. Yeah, you never know. But, um... You know, I, I think this is interesting because um, the homie local... Who was that from the Twitter that linked us up? Uh... Ooh. Class Clown KJL. Cal Class Clown KJL linked us up on this shit. And um, and it's on this um, website, <laughs> incels.is. I looked at this person's profile, something that I like in it, political atheist. Damn. I like that. I, I can dig it. I, I, I can fucking dig it. Yeah, that's a, that's a fucking smack in the face. Um, political atheist? I like it. A fucking... So this shit, incels.is yes. and voluntary celibate forums. Folks remember forum websites. Yeah. The greatest of all like that. <laughs> like niggas saying you have echo chambers now. You, know, you think back to when we had forum websites for you young niggas. That was like if your Facebook group was a whole website. <laughs> okay. Um. And so he linked the video that someone re-uploaded to YouTube in there. Mm -hmm. And the thread is interesting, right? So, again, like, in the thing, he's complaining about <laughs> black men having dreadlocks and sagging pants. He says the dreadlocks are the mullet for black people. Yeah, no, we look fly in dreadlocks. Mullets are disgusting. And also, like, there's there are skinny little dreadlocks, big fat dreadlocks. There's guys in the Virgin Islands that like having want to have it like two giant clumps mm -hmm. like you know and, and maybe jamaica and shit too but uh fucking there's a lot of different dreadlocks and also to, like to compare it to the mullet so weird there's not a lot of thought goes into that and also if you actually knew black hairstyles there was a black end of the mullet it was called the shag i think that he probably is looking at it from a very like specific white lens where that's like a classism thing because you think of mullets it's like Oh, like, oh, uh, redneck country, you know, niggas from, like, rural Alabama. Whereas mm. he's, like, that's, like, the black version. Like, uh, like, trashy, uneducated, you know, Negroes. Yeah. And, um, and he's saying that, the pants sag, and he uses the, um, the homophobic F-bomb. He drops that casually, saying mm. that's what you look like with your pants sagging. And, um, and then they have a comment thread in there. And man, these guys are interesting. They have their whole own vernacular. A uh, guy, what's his name? It says, um, Foreign Game. Mm -hmm. And uh, Foreign Game leaves a comment. He says, um, this confirms that he went SB yeah. after he kept seeing white women getting blacked by BBCs in his city. Angry emoji crying, angry emoji crying. News articles also say he called women whores if they dated black men. Yeah, you trying to find out what went SB went means? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck that means. I mean, I'm presuming that's like uh, going like, ballistic and going on a shooting spree or something, but... Yeah, or, or if you're in um, an episode of Wentworth going bunta on you. Um, and then another individual named... Um, you know, and again, these are just their internet names. Uh, Manuel Half Curry. And this, he said uh, his views on race mixing are not wrong. It's degenerate TBH. And um, and then Foreign Game came back and said, uh, I wonder how many white cells will go SB as they see more and more black men dating white girls. Angry emoji crying. 
and then uh, somebody has a picture of something from a Japanese style animation. Of, of, they always fucking do. And it says, um, I'm I'm verbatim quoting him here, so I'm going to use the uh, homophobic slur. Uh, verbatim quote from Ritalna's cell. It says, um, all the slack jawed faggots who left their clever comments on that video deserve hollow tips. Okay. Now, if police were actually about serving and protecting and stopping crime, they'd be on this website finding that fucker's IP address, tracing that fucker down, and getting him out of society. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he'll shoot up some shit, and then we'll say, go back and check episode 700-something, we saw this coming. Mm -hmm. Like, he's lit, because he's talking about the comments on the YouTube video. He said they deserve hollow tips. Yeah. All right? So, there's your next shooter. You heard it here first, fuckface. Um... Manuel Curry also said, um, uh, he said he, he's responding to the person that said he went SB after uh, seeing black men dating white girls. And he said, nah, white females are still statistically the loyalist race when dating. Anyone saying otherwise is coping. This guy literally deluded himself into thinking black guys were why he couldn't get a female. Massive delusional cope. And as a product of race mixing myself, I am completely subhuman, so I will never advocate for it. What the fuck is wrong with these guys? It's weird. Yo, and under his, um, under his, uh, screen name, like, his, like, personal tag is the word abomination. Self. Hate. I found a bunch of things that SB stands for, but I can't, none of them seem applicable to this. Oh, what, what did you find? Oh, um, a lot of them were, like, stupid bitch, so, uh, well, where'd it go? Oh. I closed it, Smacking that phone fast. <laughs> yes. Um, apparently stupid bitch in Chinese, somehow sick bastard. I don't know. I just fucking snap back, but like snap back would not have relevance in this context. I don't know. I don't Wait, know. snap back? Yeah. You think? Think about how black people say clap back. And also think about that. If, if, if we apply this to this, mm -hmm. you know, if we're correct, the logic of it is there in the context that, um, compare it to the language revenge porn. Yeah. Like, he's not a victim of anyone, but they're calling it snapback as if he's retaliating for something done to him. Well, something was done to him. Nobody fucked him. And that is doing something to you. It is doing something to you, kind of. All right. Um, another comment is just a bunch of homophobic nonsense. I'm not... I'll verbatim quote a homophobic slur if it's in a sentence where somebody's trying to make sense. Trying. Um, so somebody responds to the one... Um, uh, saying the uh, the product of race mixing guy, mm -hmm. and his name is Dregster six six six, and uh, he said probably got tired of seeing his potential looks match eating black dick. You seem to forget um, that white foids are only loyal to Chad's Chadites. If you're a um, sub six white boy, I can easily see Stacy's and sub five white foids going after eight plus drooling Tyrones over you and leaving sub six white boys in the trash bin. So that was a really long winded, long winded to say if your looks are only average, a slightly above average white woman is going to fuck a black guy before she fucks you. But a, an, an eight plus drooling. Yes. That's Meaning, attractive. That yes. Yes. So let's, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep your racism. Like the, he's like a big football player and he drools and he's, uh, and he's, you know. And people that are tuning in and maybe checking out, stopping by while we're live, we are actually reading comments from an incel forum board, um, responding to an upload of, uh, one of the videos of Scott Bierley. Mm -hmm. It was great hearing Amy Goodman pause on that one. It was just dead air for a second. Like, you think your headphones broke or something, and then she just goes for it. It's outstanding. I'll, I'll, if you remind me, I'll play it for you later. It's great. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, Foreign Game comes back and responds to the one we just read, and he says, 
I see Stacy's and young white girls with thug rapper wannabe ugly blacks, so not even Tyrone's, angry emoji crying. I used to live in Florida, and, and a black male, white female together is by far the most common interracial coupling in a city like Tallahassee, which made him go SB. And, all right, this, 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 how they talk to each other. This is serious issues with them. It's like, it's weird. We're like, yo, climate change, trans women getting murdered, uh, shit happening. They're like, man, people are fucking that I don't think should be fucking. <laughs> um, so um, this individual's name is Slavic Morpheus. All right. So Slavic Morpheus came in and said, as an ethnocell, I am oh not Oh my a- <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Different sex of incel. Sects. <sighs> He said, um, as an ethnocell, I am not a big fan of race mixing between white and other races. For the next 50 years, or at least, y'all cracker motherfuckers better stick to your own color. Weeb ass yellow feveral. Oh, wow. Fever cell. Wow. Are pathetic, but it's understandable why they avoid the white feminist ham beast. Wow. I really want to get into this language they're speaking, man. Oh, you don't understand what he said? What the fuck did he say? He's saying he's an ethnocell, which means he only would date white women. And so even if a woman of another race wanted to get with him, he'd remain an incel. And then he's saying that um, weeb ass yellow face fever cell. He's talking about uh, white guys who have like an Asian girl fetish. Like he's talking shit about them, saying he understands because white women are feminists, but it's still <coughs> disgusting to race mix. Fucking weirdos, yeah. man. Uh, These guys are always thinking about fucking, man. Think about model airplanes. <laughs> um, another end. Um, okay, the abomination guy comes in a response to the dragster, mm-hmm. and uh, he said, and he agrees. He said exactly. This is what happened to this guy. Chads and Chadites snatching up all the five plus white girls. Then the Tyrones taking all the sub fives, which would be around his looks match. <sighs> all right. Okay. And uh, foreign game comes in and foreign game isn't having it. Foreign game is bringing the facts. You ready? Oh, no. All right. So he foreign game is responding to the one saying white women are the loyalist. He's responding to that and saying that stat is calculated on a population of mostly white people, so the percentage will show lower as a result, meaning that if there are 100 million white women in the U.S., then the large number that date out will still a low will still be a low percentage relative to all other races because that large population size. However, the total number is still high. 20% that date out of 100 million is still 20 million white girls, which is more than all other races when looking at the number alone, not the percentage. How did he come to the conclusion that 20% of white women date out? Because when black men are drooling, apparently (laughs) white women dig it. it. All right, so I know to start token reefer so I have cotton mouth, keep myself safe. (laughs) Uh, Outstanding. But yeah, it's a a fun little thread and um, it's actually in the Twitter. You find... um, where Phoenix Khalid tagged me in the show. And yeah. what's the homie loco's name? Um, Class Clown JKL, I think. Class Clown JKL on the Twitters. Yeah. KJL. KJL. Class, Class Clown, Clown KJL. Okay. Yeah, so that, um, you can hit that fool up. And um, and, uh, and, the, and, and as far as I know, homie's going to clown with you. Homie the clown. Ha ha ha. Wow. Did you have anything next? Or are we... Uh, Chilling and what? Ellen, like Chillin a villain that's realer than uh, Matt what? Dillon. What? You got um, the fever for the filling? Uh, apparently, I have a fever for drooling Tyrones, I guess. That's a thing. I don't know. I don't really know. That you could um, tell I was drooling on the podcast. That's I why. Could, yes, that's yeah. how it started. <laughs> it just started with a little drool, and now we're here. Um. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> All right. So, anyways, <laughs> South Park Susan. Remember that one? Oh. That was uh, the white woman who was uh, calling 911 on two black women, I think, who were waiting for AAA for like a tow or a jump or something. And her name actually is and Susan. And her name actually is Susan. She's like, I have a $125,000 job and I'm hot and I'm white. 
And it was confirmed that she actually had that job. She actually had that job and got fired. Really? Yeah, she got fired. I wonder what kind of degree she has so she can just walk into joints like that. I don't know. Hmm. Well, there's an update. Uh, She has now been charged with misuse of 911. Oh. Now, what state was this? This is Charlotte, North Carolina. North Carolina. Right. Known and raised up. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the woman, now known on social media as, quote, South Park Susan, called the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police uh, 911 number, well, yeah, to report that she wanted two African American women removed from the parking lot of an apartment complex in South Park because they were, quote, allegedly intimidating her, begging her for money, and taking her pictures. What? Hey, what? I, no, you know what? Because they sense. were videoing her, so she just said to because she sees the phones up. Stop taking my picture. Okay. Um, Susan Westwood then became the latest person that CMPD has charged with misuse of nine one one, according to uh, Police Lieutenant Brad Coke, spelled like the brothers. Uh, someone, oh, shit. <laughs> someone who calls nine one one to concoct some story of something because they want to use the police department as leverage in a situation that they think will be better the will better the outcome of something for them is not going to be tolerated. According now, this is actually why she's getting charged. According to CMPD, for the fiscal July twenty seventeen to June eighteen year, operators answered more than nine hundred and fifty four thousand calls to nine one one. That's not calls. Police say so far this year, 45 other people have either been arrested or given a citation for misuse of 911. Can we get those stories? Right, I'm like, I'm going to start Googling. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, start google and and, um, I mean, now you, now you got time, because you can do Freedom of Information Act requests. Oh, fuck yes. Yeah. Uh, Coke continues, quote, anytime you have someone who either continually calls 911 and is not in real need of an emergency or someone fabricates a story to get police to respond to their location, those are certainly incidences in which we would charge someone with misuse of 911. Mm-hmm. Uh, while questioning the two African-American women about why they're in the parking lot, Westwood on the cell phone video taken by one of the African-American women can be heard saying, is your baby daddy here? Nobody cares. I'm white and I'm hot. <laughs> That is, and I get like the fact that she was hammered does play a part, but that's a weird kind of hammered. Yeah. Cause like the, like, as far as like hammered white women of like, I look at that individual, I assume she's maybe 42 to 47, somewhere no, around somewhere there. Really, yeah. yeah. Like in my experience, they typically knock things over and say, I'm sorry a lot. And then keep knocking things over. And then when you try to help them, they say, no, you don't have to do that. I'm sorry. And then knock things over again. Oh, so basically I get drunk like a 47-year-old white woman? Not walking up to people saying, (laughs) I got money and I'm hot. Like, she's like a late 90s rapper. Like, she was, was she signed to Cash Money Records? This is why I'm hot. Um... This is why I'm hot. Like, I, I wonder if she raps. Like, we need to find her videos before they get taken down. Shit. Uh, During the six-minute call, Westwood insisted officers come remove the women. At one point, she offered to pay police. (laughs) What the fuck? When officers responded, they determined the women were not a threat or breaking the law. In fact, Koch says when uh, three commanders reviewed Westwood's 911 call, something was clear. This is a quote from Lieutenant Koch. And it was obvious from this case, based on what Miss Westwood was saying to the 911 operator, the story she was telling was not true at all. That's why the determination was made to go ahead and charge her with this misdemeanor. She was using police to try and further her agenda. Our job is not to take sides. Nigga. Nigga. Our job is to be there. And in this particular instance, it was a disturbance call for service. Uh, it was there to be as peacemaker. P- peacemaker. All right, fine. Police oh. are peacemakers now. Yeah, you saw them at Occupy. They went in. They made they had- pieces, for sure. God damn, you didn't have to shit out. I- Fuck whatever joke I had in my head. You just killed it. <laughs> my God bad. Damn. Nah, you nice, man. You my God. came along. You're a goddamn comedian now. My bad. <laughs> um, our goal is not to arrest people whenever or to sign warrants on individuals who misuse 911, but that is certainly an avenue that officers can explore. Uh, in addition to the awar- uh, a warrant, the arrest warrant for misuse of 911, check me out, there are four summonses for Westwood for communicating threats and assault. Uh Aha. A spokesman for the Mecklenburg County Sheriff's Office said deputies have tried eight times since October 30th to serve Westwood, but have been unable to find her. What the (laughs) fuck? 
She went into hiding? She did. But that was when this came. And this came out on the 2nd. Um, yesterday, she turned herself into the police. Oh, yeah. So. I think I saw the mug shiz out. Yes. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. Jesus Christ. Um, mm-hmm. And then, um, and I, I have something long that I want to do at the end. So, if you, okay. I don't uh, know if you got anything else. Just this one. Just, like, a real short thing. It's like some, like, uh, Rachel Dolezal kind of shit. And speaking of Rachel Loco, um, uh, Rachel Loco in the archive chat space said she uh, uh, appreciates the program. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so this is uh, Anthony Ekundayo Lennon. <clears throat> is a white man who's been posing as a black man and uh, won a award uh, for a grant for people of color. There you go. Yes. Uh, Anthony Ekundo, Ek- what the fu- Ekundayo Lennon, who describes himself as, quote, African born again. I done seen the light. Born again African. Ha, Jesus. <laughs> Don't seem the melanin more like it. Um, struggled to find roles early in his career, so he chose a new persona. Uh, he has since benefited from taxpayer support to aid his development as a black, Asian, or minority ethnic leader in the arts. Hmm. Last year, he was named one of the four, quote, theater practitioners of color and was awarded a 400,000 pound grant as part of a two year residential traineeship. Fuck that. The, 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 the white homegirls that are out there that are against white supremacy, call the cops on his ass. Shit. Do that activism. I mean, you see the, him, call the cops. I mean, it's in the UK. I don't know if it's going to be as exciting as when police are called on black oh, people here. No, no. Damn, huh? Yeah, he's going to get a stern talking to. Yeah, uh, fuck. Do they even have cops? They don't have guns, I don't think. I mean, yeah, do they have guns? Yeah. I don't think they do. Shit. Okay, well, fucking, all right, so we need to get him to come over here so he can find out. Cause, bet you learn you, bet you gonna be white now, nigga. Yeah, over there you're black, over here you're a nigger. Guy, bring your ass. Uh, one black actor said, quote, when I discovered his background, I thought it was unfair that a white man had taken a black person's place on a BAME scheme. <laughs> uh, Lennon was actually bored, born Anthony David Lennon in Paddington, West London in 1965 to white Irish parents. Uh, but he had curly hair, and people thought he was mixed race. Nigga, this nigga does not look fucking mixed. Y'all, fuck, y'all don't know what the fuck black people look like. Not really. <sighs> um, so after people thought he was mixed race, he began to wear a Rastafarian hat and soon discovered a passion for acting. Mm-hmm. As he got older, Lennon struggled to get white parts, but soon found success within groups like the Black Theater Forum. It was decided then that he would adopt a new identity and chose a name from an African book, Taharka Ekundayo. Uh, Taharka is the name of an Egyptian pharaoh, and Ekundayo means weeping becomes joy. He wrote in his photo ID, which I guess is like a website actors use or something, uh, quote, I was at a stage in my life where to address myself as Anthony Lennon did not fulfill me. A day in SEMA would allow me to express myself as I saw fit. Some people call themselves born again Christians. Some people call me a born again African. I prefer to call myself an African born again. Although I'm white, with white parents, I've gone through the struggles of a black man as a black actor. Yeah, I actually want to hear this fucking guy talk. (laughs) I kind of do. Like, hearing you do it like that makes me want to hear this bastard talk. (laughs) Uh, After receiving the BAME funding, Lennon started his trainee, uh, started as trainee artistic director at Talawa, a black-led theater company in Shoreditch, East London. Uh, The scheme was advertised as, quote, open to people of color, and Lennon applied as a mixed heritage individual. Uh, The Art Council England said Talawa raised their wish to support Anthony with us. In responding, we took into account the law and relation to race and and ethnicity. This is a very unusual case, and we do not think it undermines the support we have otherwise provided to the black and minority people in the theater sector. So yeah, this nigga like Rachel Dolezal. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and breath always stink, cat. Nigga. Which one of that? Light skin killmonger. Mm. I, yeah, this one be farting and shit, man. <laughs> Remember I was holding him up and he farted in my fucking face? <laughs> he did. Like, he dude, did. what are you doing, light skin killmonger? Oh, by the way, this is the nigga. He doesn't look black to me. He looks like the fucking uh the Kano from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah, like he's just bulbousy. That's the thing. If you're slightly bulbousy, yes. and what he has like dark hair, mm -hmm. that's that shit. And you know the funny thing is, I thought that, I thought that maybe you had missed that story. So I wanted to spring that one on you. Oh, this one? Yeah. Oh no! I didn't know you had it. Ah, teamwork yeah. makes a dream work. <laughs> Should have read the show notes thread, nigga. What? And I think it was the homie Zakaya logo had posted it, and I told her and the guy I was like, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get it with this one here. <laughs> You thought. So something I've been doing, like over the past, actually I think ever since we started, we hit episode 700, was deliberately bringing back old shit every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Especially because some of that old shit we did when we did not have high definition audio yes. and we were on different parts of the continent. Yes. Now we're in the same room and we're doing this one again. Yes, ma'am. This one, one is the dope shit. All right. Now remember the um the Supreme Court was like, "Hey man, we're going to let them gay folks get married." And this white woman got on Facebook and said, "No. I'm cleaning and this is a really sad day for me today. And it's a very sad day for a lot of Christ followers because today our But if he's one of those people who thinks Trump winning is like God's plan. That everything that God Maybe, but this is from 2013. Yeah, but I still bet you she still thinks that Trump winning is God's plan. Oh, maybe. Created his church to be as man, as woman, Adam and Eve. Five justices decided that God was wrong. And now... Now is the time that Christians have a voice. You know, I hear a lot of people say, you know, you Christians, you know, you're not into the times. You know, that's what people say to white Christians. Yes. Hey, you Christians, you're not into the times. That is what they say. Was that your fucking John Mulaney impression? Uh, no, I, I don't know. I can do a John Mulaney. That was a John Mulaney impression. Huh? Didn't know I could do one. I don't really do any impressions well. It just sounds like me changing my presence a little bit. <laughs> you're not you're not into times. You know, you gotta get it's 2015. Oh, 2015. Shit. Damn. God did not change. His word is truth. Mm -hmm. Your word is a truth. Mm -hmm. My word is a truth. Mm -hmm. God's word is truth. Mm -hmm. And God says that marriage is between a man and a woman. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you she has practiced that multiple times when she has called the manager. I don't care if it's holiday season and you're in the middle of a rush. I want what I want now. Right, yeah, like for what? It's April 5th and I want a McRib. Like that, that little girl we saw at McDonald's. Woo, that girl! I want it now! Y'all, y'all, it was like straight up Veruca Salt, Willy Wonka on the truck. She fucking stomped her foot and said, I want it now. And then Phoenix and I, we talk. <laughs> loud enough for the parent to hear us and be embarrassed. It's like, yay, hey, don't act like that's not how you're raising it. Yeah. It's true. Whew. And God says that marriage is between a man and a woman. I don't care. Woman. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. It's fucking dramatic you shit. Think I'm judging you. <laughs> the fact is the God of the universe <laughs> of the universe. Yes, we get it. God is the racist, sexist, homophobic bigot he was created to be. We know. <laughs> Top flight security of the world, Craig. Woo! He is the truth. Jesus Christ, not Muhammad. Okay? It's just like these Islamic extremists. Because they're so fucking tolerant of God. <laughs> gay marriage in the Middle Eastern world. What the fuck? Especially the Islamic extremists. Expe especially them, yes. Okay? It's just like these Islamic extremists. Oh God, extremists. this is that video. Okay? Yeah. They're not just oh extremists. God. They're Islamic. <laughs> They're not just extremists. They're Islamic. <laughs> okay? They're not just extremists. They're Islamic. <laughs> They're Islamic. They're Islamic. <laughs> I 
had that in the soundboard for like three Ooh. years. <laughs> oh man. Uh, that was so fun to have in the soundboard. Extremists. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not just extremists. They're Islamic. <laughs> President Obama, Islamic stream extremists. <sighs> I am so sick of people being lukewarm. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah, we're serious. This video is outstanding. It's one of the greatest of all time. Let's keep it going. All these people saying they're Christians and are on the Facebook going, yay. I'm so proud of those justice. Are you a Christian? Oh, my God. Jesus Bible Christ, that read. didn't sound like my foster mother. <laughs> <clears throat> oh my gosh! Oh man. Okay, all I want to know is truth. Okay. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think about my opinion. Because you know what? I could really care less. I don't care if you're my Facebook friend. But Christians <clears throat> are huh? little Christ. Those are people... All right. Christians are little Christ. Uh, yeah. That's why they're... Like Smurfs. They are like Smurfs. Yeah. Like Smurfs. But follow Christ. That means we don't. We believe that when babies are born, when they're conceived, it said, Jesus said, I knew you before you were conceived. That means that they are not to be aborted, okay? It means that a man and a wife are to be married, okay? A man and a wife. Yes not even a woman anymore there's no such thing as single just born wife taxpayer spouse, spouse. <laughs> that's what the fuck it says on our shit <laughs> jesus christ and you had a job <laughs> doesn't even matter she pays taxes why aren't we both taxpayer why because penis <laughs> jesus fuck that's what god said i'm telling you what god said now if you don't want to like me but I'm telling you what the God of Abraham, Jacob, has said. And the he Jew? said. Yeah. It's not a Jew. Are you sure? Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure Jewish people think abortion is okay. That's because they're Jews. <laughs> Jews are Jews. <laughs> That's the fact. That because oh. of your speaking yes, of which, your nigga Jew friend want to come back on the show. Katie, wait, but Katie Halper wants to come on this program. I do believe that's what she said. And she wants us to go on her program. And she thinks it's funny that whatever the fuck you said, you call it like a nigga Jew or Jew nigga, some kind of type of shit. And she thought it was really funny. That I would say something like that. Yes. Have you not heard the archives? It's called the wine cellar. Mm -hmm. We don't speak gutter language. Uh, no, we're like the $5 bottles of Manischewitz wine cellar, actually. And they just don't have that in this town. They don't fucking have the blackberry. Well, you actually can't drink anymore anyway. I know. Yeah. Ugh. Get it together, Grouch. Ugh. Sinfulness. He came to die on a cross because of you. The very people that are just like spitting him in his face right Sweetheart. now. Sweetheart. But if what? I don't get a gay marriage. Oh, my bad. Oh, no. But if I don't get a gay marriage and have an abortion, then he died for nothing. Might as well get my sin on. So you're just spitting him in his face right now? I love how she worded that. I mean, just based on what I've heard about the crucifixion fiction story, it seems like he was kind of okay with that. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Yeah, he was. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he was. When they said spitting, that was a metaphor for rapping. They were spitting verses at him. That's why they called it that in the Bible. They're verses. Okay? Wow. There. Really? That's what you're... Step your Christ game up, chief. Really? Chief. Wow. Even don't just sit there and say you don't care. I don't care. Oh, dear Jesus in heaven. I just pray that these people wake up, Lord. That they see that our nation, the very <coughs> men that made our constitution, they were believing, they believed in you as Lord and Savior. These men did not expect our country to have this happen. She's the real men's rights activist. Wait, does she mean like the founding fathers didn't expect abortion to happen? Because what? The 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 slave owning rapists who killed native people and stole their land. Those people. You want to do another? Let's do one more classic, a short one. This one is outstanding. This one's just funny, just because of her accent. Oh, and no. what she's talking about is just amusing. This for no reason. I know people tune in. They're like the hard hitting news. 
We did that part already. We did that part already. <laughs> Good morning. I know I've already done a video in the past couple days, but ladies, it's pretty much legging weather. I love All right, it's legging weather. Is she like Patty Mayonnaise's mother? The what? fuck is wrong with her voice? You mind your business. You don't worry about her voice. You mm -hmm. worry about this leggings propaganda. You about to learn you something. There's mm -hmm. another old one. Much legging weather. I love legging weather. I don't care if you don't like leggings. Don't judge me. They are comfortable. They don't cut into you. They're always the right length. I feel like pajamas. I love them. You can dress them up. You can dress them down. You can look like a frat girl or you can look pretty classy in them depending on what you choose to pair with them. This morning while trying on my leggings, I couldn't find my, my normal leggings. So I had to borrow McKenzie's for a hot minute. And I'm like, whoops, mm -mm, that ain't gonna work. So I'm heading to the store right now to get me some other leggings. This is why I'm making this video. Wait, can we just what? talk about the fact that you lost pants in your house and you can't find them yeah what? there's a lot of places you can lose pants what's going on in your house ma'am you can lose pants in a lot of places <clears throat> uh, under the kitchen sink <clears throat> under the kitchen sink yeah the junk drawer we have one of those now we do have a junk drawer yeah we like deliberately because we didn't have any, so we just like made, we're like, take this stuff that we know where it could go, but put it there. Now we have a junk drawer. There's cookie cutters in the junk drawer. We have cookie cutters? Mm-hmm. I don't even, I don't, I have no reason for cookies to be special shapes. I'm going to turn them one all One of them is a circle. Jesus Christ. Use the circle cookie cutter then. No. No, I'm just going to eat. You've seen me in action. make cookie dough and just lay it in a pan oh yeah oh my god oh because you don't make cookie dough you buy cookie dough that as well yes yeah i don't make shit man i don't do that I'm not a, i'm not a hippie like you some of you people like to use leggings as britches as pants pants that ain't how they're Nigga, supposed what the to be fuck is pants pants britches <laughs> you ain't supposed to use leggings like britches pants pants don't you uh, how what because you're wrong <sighs> that ain't how they're supposed to be wore if you can't wear a shirt that covers your tail so i can't tell that you got some aztec print thongs on you don't need to be wearing them aztec print thongs on does it have but, to be aztec what if it's like mayan but also if it's a thong how can you see the print why are you looking so hard <laughs> 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 That's rule number one. If they're too tight, that I can see you got a tattoo on your leg. They're too tight. They ain't to be war, period. All right. They ain't to be war, period. Uh, why are you looking at people like this? To judge them. Ugh. Like, how do I know what to say about them to my friends over tea if I don't stare at them very hard? She seems more like a friends over moonshine and pecan pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's called pantyhose, honey. Panty hose. <sighs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> White leggings. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. White leggings. Them's a big old no no. You can see all kinds of stuff through them. See, leggings, it, most of the time, it don't matter how big you are. As long as you keep your tail in covered. You can be a big old girl. I'm a big girl. I'm a thick girl. I got thick legs. I got thick calves. I got a big old butt. And I got a big old gut. So, you got to conceal it. You wear your longer shirt, like a tunic. Sometimes you can wear them with a little dress. That's fine. Wear them with boots. You can wear them with flats. You can wear them with all sorts of things. But make sure your tail is covered. Nobody wants to see what kind of panties you got on. Nobody wants to see anything going up in any body part that you have, I assure you. I mean, that stuff's left I mean, you bedroom. could just not look at it if that's happening. If you but, don't want to see it, you could just not look at it. Uh, or just what look if, the other way. What if the person wearing it wants people to see it, and your husband is one of those people that wants to see it? Absolutely the fuck not. That's why it's not allowed. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly rule. what's going on. <laughs> he done been looked in way too much <laughs> at that colored gal running Ooh. around that little... 
that little Polo Rican gal that done moved into our neighborhood. How can her parents afford to live here? Mm-hmm. And why she ain't got no job? She just go to school every day? So she just gonna stay home and go to college. What makes her think she's so special? Uh, her Aztec print thong. Aztec? Is she a Mexican? Could be. Actually, yeah, could be. <laughs> All right. This was a very serious program. <laughs> We don't fuck around on this show. Hey, we covered real news. We did. Well, you did. Yeah, yeah you did. And then tomorrow, you, what up? Oh, I was saying tomorrow I want to record something about voting because y'all are pissing me off about this voting shit. Yes. Yeah. The whole like, your ancestors died for you to vote. No, no, the fuck they did not. No. No. They died because white people killed them. That's why they died. Did you forget that part? You smelly smeller that stinks. How do you feel? I feel, I feel amazing. Is this how men feel? All the time. Even the ugly ones. It's a chance to do good for us boys in the hood. Just call us NWA, neighbors with appetizers. It's Moral Monday, and you're in the wine cellar. All right, paypal.me slash phoenixandwilliam, patreon.com slash wine cellar media fund. Shout out to the homies that just signed up again. Dave L and Vergie V Thank came you. through in the joint. Fuck yeah. And remember, Phoenix Kalider ain't got no job no more. You know, but uh, you know, so she's wine cellaring. Yes. And uh, we're doing the shit. Yes. Alright, so please be as safe as possible wherever you are. 